Okay, so today in class, while you're doing the fruit fly lab, you're going to also be talking about chi-squared analysis. Now, this analysis is a statistical test, and it basically just proves whether you can attribute whatever it is you're looking at to chance or if there's something, you know, further we need to be looking at. And the way that we do that is with accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is a statement that basically says there's no statistical difference between the variables. And so whatever we're seeing in this data is just random chance or a sampling error, but it's nothing to be concerned about. So basically a null hypothesis says this is sort of what we expected to happen and shocker, it happened. Now I'm going to be talking about a lot of different terms as we go through this. And so I just wanted to kind of give you um, the formula and talk about what each of the variables stand for. And so what we're doing when we're looking at chi-squared analysis is we're looking at the difference between expected numbers of a Mendelian cross, right? Like if you cross two heterozygotes, uh, the expected cross would be three to one, right? Three dominant, one recessive for phenotypical um, results observed data would be the numbers you legitimately got when you did the cross. So this would be like if you were actually crossing like pea plants or fruit flies or whatever, you would take the literal numbers that you got as a result. So when you're looking at this formula, and this formula is right here, um, chi squared, that's just the analysis that we're doing, equals the sum, that's what that like fancy E looks like, the sum of your observed minus your expected data squared all divided by your expected data. Okay, so this is crazy, but luckily for the um, for the fruit fly lab that we're doing, you don't actually have to do these calculations. The simulation will do the calculations for you, but I'm just explaining this to you so that if you are curious about how all this information is getting to you, this is how it happens. And when we're looking at our chi-squared results and we're determining if we can accept or reject our null hypothesis, which again, I will explain as we go through, um, we're going to need to know degrees of freedom. And this is another term that I will again get into later, but this is like your definition portion. And a degree of freedom is the number of categories you have. For us, it's going to be the number of phenotypes possible minus one. So if we're doing a monohybrid cross, meaning that we're crossing one gene and it has two traits, right? A dominant and a recessive trait, our degree of freedom would be one because we have a dominant trait and a recessive trait. That's two categories, but you do the number of categories minus one. So you would end up with a degree of freedom of one. Now, when we're talking about probability itself, which is stats 101, right? Um, it's just a determination of whether the chi-square tests are random. We want to notate a value on a chart, which is 0 0.05, which indicates whether the test is random. So if you have a low value, less than 0 0.05, right, less than 5%, then what you got for your data is sort of the expected data, right? You have the random results, so you would accept the null hypothesis. If you have, uh, if you have above that, then the opposite, right? So the lower the value, the better. The higher the value, it's worse. Um, and if you have a value that's above 0 0.05 or whatever the degree of freedom in relation to 0 0.05 is, then you would reject the null hypothesis. So now let's talk about the actual objectives of when, if we were to actually do a chi-squared analysis. So number one, you would determine the null hypothesis. Number two, you would determine the degrees of freedom. You would calculate the chi-squared from your expected and observed data. And then you would determine if you would accept or reject your null hypothesis. So let's do a cross where we are going to cross 
uh, using Mendelian inheritance, so nothing weird going on. We're gonna assume all uh, normal Mendelian rules are in effect. So we are going to cross two heterozygous organisms. So we would expect a three to one phenotypic ratio in offspring, right? If you did a Punnett square and you had crossed two heterozygotes, the phenotypic offspring would be three dominant and one recessive. That's a, a very common phenotype. We've talked about this before. You should know this by now. So then we're going to do some math to figure out if our results that are observed results, our observed numbers that we got uh, fit into this and any variation is due to random chance or if maybe it's not following Mendelian inheritance. So for this, here's our actual problem. So we crossed our two heterozygotes and we got 102 round seeds and 44 wrinkled seeds. So our null hypothesis states that there is no statistical difference between 102 to 44 and the respect and the expected value of 3 to 1. So then you would just fill in the chart below, and this is the part that the simulation does for you, which is pretty sweet. So you don't have to do all this math, but this is what you would be doing if you were to actually do a chi-squared analysis. So first column, our observed numbers. This is taken straight out of the question itself, right? We got 102 round and 44 wrinkled. So our total was 146. Since we know our total is 146, our expected, you'd have to divide this number by four and then three, like whatever that number is times three would be your round, right? That would be the, the three in the three to one ratio. And then the other one would be be the white or wrinkled that should say wrinkled not white okay and then you do observed minus expected so you just do that math then you square that you just do that math and then you do the observed this number observed minus expected squared divided by your expected number and you get that so again this is just straight up math like you would just use a calculator to do this i would never expect you to be able to do this just offhand and again i'm not asking you to actually do this chi-squared analysis i'm just showing you how it happens to get your final chi-squared result you add up these two numbers right it's just the sum of this last column which is 2.05 and this is like your final, final answer. So this is like what we care about. That is your chi-squared result. As I mentioned, degrees of freedom is just the amount of phenotypes minus one. In this case, it's round and wrinkled minus one. So degree of freedom is one. And then we determine our probability. So we know that our degree of freedom is one. So we're only going to be looking at this row. Our chi-squared number is 2.05, so that falls in between these two, which is perfect. So that means that we are going to accept the null hypothesis. We are going to accept it because our number fell in between these two, which means that the variation that we saw in our observed numbers is not different enough from the expected numbers to count for anything more than just random chance. So your final part here, and this is what you're gonna have to do when it's asking for your conclusions, is accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is kind of what I was just explaining. So if the expected results is greater than 5% over here, then you accept the null hypothesis. If not, you reject the hypothesis. Again, our number 2.05 fell uh, in between these two numbers, so we're going to accept it. And what you're going to do is just accept the hypothesis and give your reasoning. In this case, we're going to accept it because our chi-squared value is 2.05 which is less than 3.48, so the differences we see are due to chance. So we would accept our hypothesis because our chi-squared value fell in that range. 
And that's everything you need to know about chi-squared analysis.